All right, it's uh, Breakfast of the Masters. It is the 8th of June, Monday. Get your get your uh, trading hats on. It's Monday. We got a week to go. Um, today we're going to do instead of using tick charts. I know some of you cringe. You don't really want to be on tick charts. Or you can't be on tick charts because your platform doesn't have good ticks. So when I can when I am trading time based bars, I always grab those first because I know more people are likely following time based bars than tick based doesn't mean I'm not going to show tick based I show what I have unfortunately and Nic Nikolai and um, anybody else that's relatively new when I show trades a jet it's almost always a real trade if it's not I will tell you that it's a student's trade or um, in the example that when I first got back after being back for a month we talked about concepts but generally when I show trades they're real trades all right so the idea today what I liked about to what we're gonna look at today is if you think back about what we were doing before I went to have foot surgery one of the things that we talked about was the importance of knowing when you plan your trade not in the middle of the trade but when you plan your trade what are you looking for what should you be looking for okay if you're not consistently profitable yet you're just getting your feet underneath yourself you shouldn't be looking for the big slam you should be looking for the you should be looking for the money that you know you can take off the table period okay Peter and Gina say repeatable patterns and Gina adds a three to one and by that she means I assume at least three to one okay it's three to one or better okay period we don't plan something that's two to one 2.5 to one okay if it's not three to one we're just not interested it's not worth your time and you'll be shocked how often that or when you have to st when you have to think about stretching your stop how often that will filter out a crappy trade so stick with those ideas fill out your trade plan before you trade and know what you're looking for are you going to take the high probability profit target are you going to try and follow up with profit stops and see if you can let this thing run what are you about okay if it's important for you to be profitable take the easy money get out of the way wait for the market to reset or look at another market or be done for the day be happy okay if you're gonna try and milk something know about it in advance and understand what those risks are and whether or not you get to do it so today is one of those trades where you could have traded it a number of ways and w as we go through it we'll talk about there's at least three profit possibilities we'll talk about how you want to play this and whether you would play it ready to get to work so if you've never seen uh, Dick Feynman Dr. Feynman's anything about Dr. Feynman do yourself a favor go to YouTube Google Richard Feynman and grab one of his lectures you know I know there's some people that think that um, well a lot of people think that I'm just a grumpy lecturer but there's some other people that think that I'm pretty fun um, my students at Stanford and MIT actually you find me a hoot um, but I'm nothing I'm nothing compared to Dick Feynman um, you know he, he would walk into a lecture hall five minutes late with a bucket of ice in one under one arm and a watermelon in the other You're looking at this guy walking <laughs> into the classroom like all right what, what's up today um, and you know we're talking about PhD physics so always a good time um, it, it, he was in the Manhattan Project the atomic bomb project when he was 17 years old so um, been there done that seen everything 
Um, it's tough. How do I spell watermelon? <laughs> or Feynman. Feynman is F-E-Y-N-M-A-N. I think. Let me look at my books. Uh, Dick Feynman. I don't know if I can reach that far. Hang on. Let me get you the official spelling. That is correct, F E Y M. F E Y N M A N. Oh, yeah, it's cut off on the slide. Yeah, um, and the other thing, oh, and by the way, um, yeah, so it is F E Y N M A N. By the way, those of you um, that were watching the videos, uh, if, if the video is ever degraded, let us know right away. Apparently some setting got changed while I was gone. I know Kevin was changed his, changing some server things. I'm not going to blame him. And I didn't even check it. So I will check it when I render this morning and we should have a... And, and on top of that, I put up new renderings of the old sessions, both in the evening and breakfast, and they should be fine. They should, they should all be normal if you look now. If they're not, let me know, okay? But anytime they're, they're degraded, anytime they don't look normal, let us know right away. Something's wrong. Alrighty, let's do some work. I watched Friday this AM and it was okay, good. All right, let's get some work done. All right, so we're going to be looking at the Aussie, 20 minute Aussie. Anybody trade Aussie these days? And again, coming back from being off for five weeks or so. Hey, Scotty, how are you? Uh, coming back from being around, being away for five weeks or so, I'm looking for something that I can handle. Remember in the crude, I actually went up in number of ticks per bar just because I wanted to slow down what I was looking at, trying to get in, in tune. You need to know yourself. Well, for me, you know, I trade Aussie Canada a lot, and um, if you can sort it out once you jump on board, they do tend to trend. And also, 20-minute bars, lots of time to think during the bar. All right, so let's take a look. We get a long energy coil here so price is full of energy do you prefer futures or the FX or whatever it doesn't Peter they're all the same the only reason I would use cash FX or Forex or whatever slang you want to use versus futures Aussie futures are pretty deep the only reason I would use cash is remember I trade hundreds of tr hundreds of billions of dollars almost a trillion dollars at this point the fund is so if I'm going to put you know the whole shot in it's obviously not going to be in futures I'll use some futures and I'll use some cash but if it's not liquidity issues I actually Peter I love futures they're transparent you know exactly where you're going to be filled the spreads are meaningless for basically right Hey, Robbie, how are you? Thank you. Welcome back to you, too. Okay, do you use ticks on the currency? Um, no, I use exactly what I'm showing you. There are times, Al, I like sometimes in the yen to use ticks that approximate something close to 20 minutes. Um, but that's only because then it tends to smooth out that one wide yen bar. But other than that, I just use 20 minutes. Don't bother. Yes, Pete? What? What I miss? Anybody else lose sound? Or is it just Pete? Can you guys hear me? Sorry, Pete. You're there. Okay. It's just you. All right, here we go. So, we get uh, a tight range. 
and two ways to look at this I connected the tops and just rolled them over kind of a harmonic coil it's also though kind of a sloppy secondary coil so it didn't spring up it just kind of floated higher right then we get a wide range bar let's call the whole thing a wide range bar right some normal trading then we get a pop some follow through really see that all right so take a moment and look it over see what that looks like again we've been talking about repeatable patterns and if you trade I had an email uh, over the weekend from somebody that's not in breakfast that probably is going to have to come to breakfast they want to learn more because they keep asking the same questions but I am um, really at the point where I can't answer as many emails as they write they're still mat mixing and matching time frames looking to a longer term tick chart that they say quote gives them the trend then moving to range bars to quote give them the price action and all they're doing is chasing their tail yeah it's a, it's a waste of time find one spot I'm gonna call it a space frame time frame or number of ticks or range whatever the hell you're gonna do yeah verboten due to volatility differential that's exactly that's a good term volatility differential the two don't mix or match they don't tell we're not they're not talking about the same thing so they don't help you find one thing stay with it so in this case it's going to be 20 minute Aussie okay so as you look at the chart and we're just starting out this is me just starting out so I get up on Tuesday morning right in here Matt Cube says, for me, the time is better spent mastering myself. Well, that's always going to be the best use of your time. So I get up here, and I'm trying, I'm, I'm paging through stuff. And what do I draw out? I draw out the coil. I draw out the maximum excursion line, flip it over. I watch the wire. Look at, well, it's actually, I'm up here. Let me just make it easy for you. I'm up around here. I, normally I'm up at three. As you know, I'm still on a few drugs. Nothing very serious. So maybe I'm up four, four thirty, something like that. And so as I look and, and I'm looking back here, I draw out the coil. I draw out the line of max excursion, flip it to the bottom. Notice the wide range bar that basically engulfed both sides of this harmonic coil the next wide range bar and for me you can just slap these together and consider this is one big wide range bar then we get more normalized volatility and it doesn't look like it um, and I can't yes I can draw it I can I use the Shane method it doesn't look like it but here's what we got wide range bar Everybody see that? Then we get a slight pullback. Does everybody see that? And then we get follow through. See it? Okay. Okay. Then we get follow through. So we're up to doing highs. Now we're going to pull back. I can get rid of this. This is, where, this is just the notes where I walked in, okay? Delayed zoom. Eh. Uh, you can make out of it whatever you want. This is what I want to show you. Wide range bar, pull back, follow through. Everybody get that? Wide range bar, pull back, follow through. All right, then I see price sell off a little bit. 
And the question is, is that it? That, and this is basically live, okay? Now, again, 20-minute bar. I may not even sit here for the whole 20-minute bars. You, if you want, you guys can watch every tick. I don't, unless I'm ready to execute, I don't really find the need. I can go through email. I can look at other charts. I can put together presentations. I can get some breakfast. I can come back 18 minutes into the next 20 minute bar and see what's going on and maybe go, okay, there's not going to be anything on the net, on this bar, so let me, that means I got another 20 minutes. You don't have to stay glued to the screen, period. So I see the pullback form. And the question at this point is, we get about a 50% pullback. Not a, this is not a Fibonacci thing. This is, again, good old Archimedes. We get about a 50% pullback. And now our question is, higher high or take out a low? Now, what, what do we know about the answer? 50-50, right? 50-50 in Archimedes, right? So that means how are we going to find out? We're going to observe more bars, right? It's on the right. That's why we trade to the right. Yep. So we're going to let price do its thing. So let's see what happens. We've got advanced multi-pivot lines drawn out from the high and the low. And so we kind of got price boxed in. Let's see which line gets respected. So price seems to be leaving a lower high. Huh. Interesting. So now we come down and take out this low. Oh, crap. Where have I seen this before? No. Look on the screen. Where have I seen a wide range bar before? Yeah, to the left. Right here. If I put these two together, it's the same bar. But I mean, even relative to this volatility, this bar relative to this volatility and this bar, it's the same. Okay? You see it? So now the next question is, what do we get? Wide range bar follow through a pullback right so if it's a repeatable pattern we expect I mean does it have to look exactly like that no but it needs to have some of those things right with me follow through I guess we'll call I guess we'll call this pause or a pullback because nothing happened but we get follow through all right and a new high that's not perfect but basic idea okay so here's a here's this portion of that pattern see it sell off yes as it accelerates it does condense yeah generally all right so here's our pullback and here's our prior highs so our question is are we going to make another higher low and higher high or are we going to break the higher low right doesn't take long we break through all right so Pardon me if I left some lines that I normally don't leave on, but, you know, I'm a little out of practice. I, it's only my, what, second session after being out for four or five weeks. I don't want to be too stumbly-bumbly. Okay, so 
price meanders along and you can see it makes a high but it's not accelerating quite as much as it was right so I'm interested in what happens here and so just as I did before with this harmonic coil I put in a line of maximum excursion drop it to the bottom is everybody with me Nikolai you you all good I'm just using lines to help me help me draw uh, drive that's all right pretty easy stuff all right So we got a nice harmonic coil and prices respecting what we've drawn. Leave a bottom. Okay, have we seen this before? Okay, why is it called a harmonic coil? What is harmonic? Well, it means that it's got frequency on the top and the bottom that are that's not horizontal it's just a fancy term for a range that's sloped how about give me a sloped range too set up is that an easier term Gina maybe we should be less fancy and just call it a sloped range what do you like I yeah, just ask what you like not what sloped range Okay, so have we seen the wide range bar out of a coil before? Okay. Tell me what we expect after this. We expect a couple things. We don't always get every one of them. They don't always look the same. But what do we, what if we always follow through is the one thing we've gotten every time, right? We've all got, we've always gotten new highs after that. Right? We've got either a pause or a bit of a pullback, and then we've got new high, right? Does that make sense? No, Pete. That's what we're, Pete, I'm not even going to say out loud. That's what we're going to look for, but that's not what we've seen, right? You with me, Pete? Don't jump the gun. All right, so we get these wide range bars, then we get either a pause or a pullback, and then we make new highs, right? That's been the repeatable pattern. Does everybody get that? This is not a repeatable pattern that I have been watching for, you know, 37 years. This is what I'm seeing on this particular chart on this particular day, right? So you should be paying attention to bars and the patterns that form on a chart that you're watching as you, you know, look getting ready to trade. You should be paying attention to the patterns. Make sense? Now they're not always this clear. This is pretty this is pretty easy to spot if I point it out. If I hadn't pointed it out, how many of you do you think would have seen this and gone, oh yeah, look, it's the third time. Or do you not inspect your charts that closely? Think about it. Nobody going to answer me? You always make me slow down. Okay, good. Sometimes. I was watching this and missed the short price did not come back to my order entry, it says Amanda. Okay. I look for patterns. I try to. I'm not always correct. Okay, well. Uh, wouldn't have that much clarity if you hadn't explained it. Well, that's why I'm slowing down to explain it. Sometimes I see it. Amanda says on the third. Ones like this, I see, of course, on occasion there are patterns I miss. You're always going to miss some things, okay? But if you can find something that'll draw you into the chart and get you in tune, that's that's what we're trying to do. 
So higher highs and higher lows, but different kinds of coils might confuse me. It's not so much the different kinds of coils I care about, Gina. It's the, what I really liked about this was the wide range bar, the pause, then the new high. Wide range bar, pause, then the new high. It's like cha-cha-cha, right? Now, Scotty caught this trade, but he didn't look at it as the way I'm looking at it. But that, that's okay. Is it on your mind that every everyone is very long? Well, how about you, Weege? Sharon says, after the lesson on 2, 2D versus 3D, this has become very clear. Good. Boy, I tell you what, if you're coming in September, I've got to, I'm going to be, there's going to be a day in September if you're coming where you have to either bring an apron or a plastic, I'm going to do a Dick Feynman on you, apron, a plastic bag, or an uh, old shirt. Because I'm going to do some, not some visuals, some hands-on good old-fashioned learning about 2D, 3D. All right, anyway, so Ouija says, let me throw this out, Ouija says, as you watch this thing progress, are you thinking that everybody's long? How about you guys? Ain't nobody getting hurt being long, are they? It's pretty hard to be short. Happy, happy, happy. All right. So, people are long. We get a wide range bar. What have we seen after wide range bars? Pull back, then follow through. Right. Consolidation, then follow through. Right. Pause, then follow through. But always follow through, right? Always. All right. So let's see what we get. This is the third time we've seen we're seeing this pattern. Okay, so we, we're testing that top. This could just be the pause, right? Look at the close. So the question is, no follow through, or is this the pullback, right? Well, it does look different, but it could also be. I mean. This could be the pullback, but it does make me scratch my head, Matt Cuban, go, hmm, well, could be the pullback, but doesn't really look or feel like the prior two, but could be. And uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, Reese says this could still be the pullback. I, I agree, Reese. Don't. I'm with you. Gina says you can see where the sellers are now. Oh, well, I. This looks like there might be sellers up here. I agree, especially when this bar drops. So it just looks and feels a bit different, right? Could be that looks a little more committed than the other pullbacks. Yeah, I think so. So let's see what we get. So we leave a low. and start to turn up. So now our question is, let's, let's uh, type it in. Is this? Is this a pullback or a sell-off? Do you think the harmonic coil being sloped down before the wide range bar is a clue the rest were angled up? That's interesting. Hadn't thought of that. Also, this is a mighty long coil. Interesting, interesting catch, Aaron. All right. So now, Matt Cube says we should now get a new high. So the question, but the question is, is this a pullback or are we in the process of a sell-off? Right. And I would posit. At this point, if we break this area, it's not going to look like the other 
times we've had a wide range bar. Something different is going to be going on, right? Okay, so patterns, repeatable patterns, are not just things that you want to put together in your portfolio as things that for entries, but they're also things that you can see during the trading day that can help you get in tune with the chart, put together the logic of what's going on, if you pay attention, right? All right, so we've got an idea, and we know it's decision time. We're either going to make a new high, or we're going to take out this low. If we take out this low, maybe something different is going on. If we take out this high, same pattern. Okay, when we start to come off, I put in a line of maximum excursion and I write it's a lower high, it's something new. Right? What are you asking, Matt? <coughs> oh, okay. So Simple stuff. Now, for median lines, remember, B, C is more important than A. Now, notice how long I waited to put in what's end up ending up going to be C. Normally, I try and do it within five bars because I'm going to trade off it, but I couldn't because I needed to find out whether or not this was a pullback or a sell-off, right? There's no point in even thinking about remember, I've, I told you on Friday somebody asked me to draw on a median line I said what's your intention draw with an intent okay I don't I didn't have any intent until I knew whether or not this was going to be a pullback or a sell-off right I didn't know now I've got something different going on so I want to know what the potential probable path of price is so there's a reason to draw in the median line now and it looks like this. And again, if you're new here, <coughs> people that teach media lines that never studied with Dr. Andrews, <coughs> excuse me, like to have their A higher than their C or their B, if it's a down slumper, I don't care. Meaningless to me. The lower high was part of the very first pattern as well, was it not? The lower high. No. We we followed through. Aaron, if we if we take this out, then it's we're still in the new pa same pattern, correct, Aaron? So the moment we take out this high. especially this high, then we'll be in that pattern of wide range bar, pull back, follow through. Right now, we're wide range bar, pull back, lower high. I'm willing to be proven wrong, but at the moment, something looks wrong. So I'll draw this in because something looks wrong. I had the same lower high before. Okay. Could this be a slightly sloped coil? Sure, could be. But this does not look like anything else we've seen, if this end, even if this ends up being a coil this big, right? Ouija says, never seen this type of selling before at prior highs. I thought it was similar to the first at this point. Okay, Aaron, well, let's go back and look. There's the first one right there. So here's our follow through. We get a pullback. And I'm going to give you that we left a lower high for three bars and then we explode. So let's see what happens. So we get a pullback. 
we'll leave a low. We leave a lower high. So I'm willing to say looks a little similar. But does it look similar now? Okay. So we've got a lower high, we've got something new. So I put in a median line that's hopefully going to show me the probable path of price in here. And somebody said it's slightly sloped coil. Somebody else said pretty horizontal. Yes, but it's a down sloping median line. The highs are decelerating. That's right, Ouija. And I know I'm going to want a another median line down the road. And here's why. Yeah, no matter what, it's a change of behavior, Gina says. Gina says, but I know I'm going to need another median line down the road. Can anybody tell me why? Well, I should say. If there's any, well, if I say that, then I'll give it up. Yeah, Scotty's got it. Anybody else? Hey, Timmy, how are you? Well, refresh frequency, I'll give you that. There you go. If there's continuation, you'll get a new pattern to the downside. There you go. And if that's the case, rain chased you indoors, Timmy. Well, that's okay. Stay dry. Your price is going lower. It needs to speed up at some stage, Amanda. Ding, 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 ding. If it doesn't speed up, I'm not going to be interested in trading, right? Make sense? I'm not going to trade a 60 pip range. So this thing is either going to accelerate or I'm not going to be interested in trading it. And if it's going to accelerate, this thing is so gently sloped, it's probably not going to be the median line that's going to give me the probable path of price of the acceleration. So down the road here, I'm going to have to reset the probable path of price. Okay? Could be an expanding pivot, sure. Could be. All right, so let's watch and see what we get. We got a lower high. This is something new. So I draw on a median line. We break a low. Okay. That's new. So. In, in more than 24 hours, it's the first time we've broken, we've taken out a low. And it, yeah, you can look at it as fill the mountain and even broken it, but close back above it. Sure, I'll take that. Let's go. Have we seen that before? Okay. Anybody got any ideas? Yeah, the median line's been tested now. Yeah, we've run the top to the bottom. Sure. Any ideas? Anybody? Sideways, says John. Any, any other ideas? I got me one. No? Scotty says, short at the upper parallel is what I did. Okay. Pendulum pullback, says John. I'd be interested in an opportunity at the high area if it's lower, says Matt Cubed. Okay. So Matt says if we make a lower high, he'd be, he'd be interested. Okay. 
I'm with Scotty, says Sharon. Need C, says Pete. Yep. Would you ever draw a down sloper with the top as A, then the red mark to the left as B, and the shoulder as C? Does not draw that. Is it illegal? Would you ever draw a down sloper with the top as A here? As A? Reese? Then the red mark to the left is B here. This? No. Sorry. It's backwards. Hey, sometimes I do it too, but it's unfortunately it takes it it takes away the mathematics of a median line. What you what you're going to get a channel out of it, and if you wait for it to be tested, then you can use it, Reese. But it's at that point, it's not a median line; it's a channel. Okay. Sometimes I draw it, but I usually usually that's by mistake. Upsloper and energy stored now release another wide range bar, please, says Kai. Okay. Um, you are now looking at the maximum line excursion to come into play, says Sharon. Am I? Okay. So, some people have some ideas. Let me just do a little, a little, a little typing. Nikolai, if you've never seen Amos Hostetter's work, this is Amos 101. Top, shoulder, weak reaction. Don't try and sell the top, try and sell the shoulder and or the weak reaction. You're now looking at the max. Okay, so I would be happy to just put a sell them in order, hanging a go, no go before, below the high, high, higher high. Okay. The high, high, sorry. So, Nikolai, if you have questions, just ask. So, Ouija says 95, so 15. We're going to use a 20 pip. I know it looks huge, but that's just because these bars are compressed. 20 pip going to go here, which measures the size of a stop that we're willing to use, Nikolai. There we go. So Ouija says, hey, at this point, I'd be willing to be something like this. And what you'd do is you'd hang at least a third of this above, and anywhere in here, you'd get short. John says, I don't see enough sellers yet. Okay. Maybe this trade's not for you, John. We'll see. Let's see what we get. I'm looking at top shoulder if we get a weak reaction I'm willing to sell John but if you want to see confirmation you can see confirmation let's see if it's there for you remember and so we break a second low by going down here remember every anything you want it's like action reaction you have to pay for it if you want to see sellers that's gonna cost you something right make sense Now, the less you pay for, the more you're assuming. And, of course, sometimes that means you're assuming more risk. So it's a balancing act. So we close with, I'm going to give it its, due, its props here. We close with great separation. We close with great separation. Close with great separation. Are we swinging to new highs or are we swinging to a weak reaction, a pendulum pullback? That's what I wrote to myself at the time. Now it's primetime New York. You, now, at this point, you can do two, one of two things. You can wait for confirmation of one or the other. Or 
you can decide that you think you understand the logic of what's going on and you're willing to spend one stop. Scotty, Sharon, Ouija, and I are willing to sell right here at the upper parallel, period. With a stop above the top because we think top, shoulder, okay, Al's in as well, okay? Sure, that would be binary. It's either going to be a lower high or it's not. And if it's not a lower high, we're gone, right? This is not going to range. It's either going to continue. Are all my entries binary? Oh, no, absolutely not. We've been we've been looking at quite a few lately that are binary, but this is coming out of the. Okay, I need to clear up that distinction when I look at your trades. Um, you know what? I'm going to tell you this, Gina. I don't really think it matters. I I know we've labeled them, but. This is what I think about what we call binary, where there's either one or two outcomes. The other outcome would be congestion, okay? In which case, I'd have to wait for the coil to be, to play its hand before I either get stopped out or the trade takes off in my direction. Um, What's important here is let's let's make a distinction between a repeatable pattern that we've seen over long periods of time in different commodities and different time frames, which is top shoulder weak reaction, or even something as simple as I draw on a median line, price respected it. Now it should also respect it on the upside and run out of energy at the upper parallel. And it's a downsloper, so I'm willing to get short up there. That's a repeatable pattern, right? Now we know price has broken through from the downside through this median line. Where, what do we know? What does Dr. Andrews tell us about price now? Let's be more specific. There you go. 80% of the time, we're going to go from the median line to the upper parallel. Okay? 80% of the time. So, in our shorthand, shorthand language, or short, what's short? Is it shorthand? I guess it is shorthand. Um, we call it 80 miles an hour, right? We're going 80 miles an hour toward that upper parallel. As we approach, the closer we get to that upper parallel, what happens? Okay, yep. Let's write it. As we approach the upper parallel, As we approach the upper parallel, we slow down from 80% to 43%. There's a 43% chance that we're going to break through, a 43% chance that we're going to pull back. 
Not sure when to ask this. Now may not be the right moment. Can you give me any sort of rules as to when you would step in at the maximum excursion line and when you would hold and stick with the 80% likelihood median line set? Please. I guess that's a question about when do you think we have a line in the sand of new activity starting at the red B and when there's still leftover effect coming from prior. Okay, well, let's do this. Reese, you can step in right here right now if A, you're willing to accept this. Do you think sellers were here and have now stepped down here? Or B, if you think that's enough noise for you above the top, you can step down right now to this bar right now. So the, for me, it's a matter of risk. There's never going to be one answer. No, there's never. I know you want an answer, but there's never going to be one answer. So the answer is always going to be this. This here's and here's the reason why. This maximum excursion line right here, we drew it right here, correct? So right now it's never been tested. Is that correct? So since it hasn't been tested, we know it is carrying some frequency here, but we don't know that it has as much viability. We know with 80% probability that we're going to get to the upper parallel. But we don't know that about this maximum excursion line. We know we're going to go from 80% to 43% if we get here. We don't know what happens here. It doesn't carry any mathematics until it gets tested. It's not been tested, right? Okay, does that help? Okay, is anybody lost by what I just talked about? Okay, well, that's fine. Go ahead and chew on it. If you got questions, that's all right. All right, so as we approach the upper parallel, we slow down from 80% to 43%. As we approach this maximum excursion line, I don't know what the statistics are on this because it hasn't been tested. But we're certainly... Aaron, I was afraid you're going to answer the question. Once it's tested, what is the math? I will say this. It's better than 50%, but it's not. It, it, it begins to hold some resistance, but I can't tell you the math. I haven't done it. So same probability as the median line once tested as if it's, well, oh yeah, that's, well, Aaron, I, I'm, John, there, you just actually answered a question that I was unable to answer. Aaron, you ready? If it's been tested, <coughs> ready for this neat trick? <coughs> Thank you, John, this is a, this is a very elegant answer. Watch this. Then do this. Oh, I uh, guess not. Ah. Thought I had a good one there, John, but that didn't work. Um, John's thought, and I, I kind of, I kind of was thinking the same thing, was that. We could think of it as the AC line of a modified shift. But yes, this wasn't. It was C, but it's not. It doesn't work. It doesn't work the same. Off minor pivots, it would, yes. But I like the thought, which is that if it's tested, it's very much like the AC line on a median line. 
Yeah. The, our problem here is that, of course, A is lower than C. So if we were drawing a, tradi a traditional median line where A was above C, this would be the AC line. So what could so what could you not use minor pivots to get that probability? Um, with this wide range bar, do you see a way for me to get that probability? I might be able to get it this way. There it is. Aaron, see it? Yeah. However, what's the problem with this, Aaron? No, there's a problem. There's a problem. Look at the median line. It zoomed the lower parallel and went to the warning line. So, we have to assume as above, so below, right? All things being equal, we'd have to assume that it's not likely to stop at this upper parallel. But good thoughts, John and Aaron both. I'm going to leave it out because it's not what I did. I'm not going to lie to you to tell you what it, you know. Oh yeah, that's what I did. So my thought about the maximum excursion line was hasn't been tested somewhere between here and this down sloping upper parallel price is going to stop okay that's what I thought and I'm not in a particular hurry because look at the close on this bar do you see this see the separation everybody not just Reese see the separation on the next bar see the separation on the next bar it's not exactly slowing down is it well it's not necessarily that I need to see a pause it's just that if I, yeah these are definitely people buying out of the hole it's that if I'm going to sell I'm going to sell at if I'm going to attempt to sell I'm going to sell at what I consider to be my most extended area my order is in but it's not in here Amanda Scotty said no in fact at that time I thought there were more fresh buyers and sellers I agree Scotty but I thought they would run right into the area of prob high probability which to me Matt, right in here right and Scotty said me too so I wasn't willing to I was going to be cheap and try and keep all my stop meaning this something like that versus I gotta get filled and put a stop down here I might after I see price action change my opinion but right now I think price is going to go to at least the upper parallel if we get if we make a new high just take me out just shoot me I'm wrong make sense this whole thing is predicated on that pattern and in this case that pattern falling apart if the pattern now reasserts itself, I'm wrong, take my money. Okay, so we come in, we touch, actually we kiss the median line, upper parallel. Don't close above it. Now if you wanted to see the test and didn't want to enter an order, I'm filled already, but what is this? This is noise right here. I have a, I my my 
order has to be at least this amount below and it certainly has to allow me at least this much above as well right yeah and Matt you could certainly put the order in now and if I were you I'd put the order in now at this close I wouldn't put it up here Scotty said that's where he got filled as well. This is so cool for me trying to say, taking the same trade as you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Scotty. All right, so let's see what we get out of this. Let's see if Matt gets filled. All right, so if you'd stretched for the upper parallel, you would not have been filled. Sorry. If you wait to see the touch of the upper parallel, then put your order in at the close. Because you can afford, that gives you plenty of stop up here above the top, as well as above the shoulder. Okay? With me? So this is almost deja vu, Friday's lesson, when everybody was still thinking long, you were a step ahead. Yeah, I'd call it stepping in the bucket, so to speak, right? Again, sorry, sports analogy. As the ball is coming forward right toward you and it looks like it's going to go past you, you step into the bucket as you shift your mass and get ready to change the direction of the ball, right? Make sense? You move that foot forward against the direction of the ball. I'll have some other live demonstrations in September but I can't do them on the internet I haven't figured out a way to do them on the internet anyway all right so now we get a close we get a lower high and a lower close if you're just getting it now and you want to chase it you could still afford actually you could still afford both at the maximum excursion line valid, I would say no. Is it, oh, is it ma um, Yeah, I, I, I just leave it there. I'm not going to bother to erase it, but I'm not using it for anything. All right, if you looked at this bar and decided to trade and put an order in off the close with a stop here, you still had a stop above the top and the shoulder and you still got filled so you had two opportunities here everybody with me I'm filled here it's the most logical of three for me but any of those three would have worked next bar okay you even would have got filled on the next bar Now, as this bar forms, can you see it accelerating away from our third lower, our second lower high, lower high, second lower high? See it accelerating? Okay. I draw this in. Because the red median line upper parallel is for entry and the green median line is for path. Can you see the acceleration of the green versus the red? Okay. If I'm right and if this is a worthy trade, yes, we are going to rotate. I've refreshed the frequency because we're going to go from this is horizontal now and we should be moving down the slope right rotating right down Nikolai just think of it as we're looking at tangents on a ball and price is going to accelerate so red median line for entry 
green median line for the probable path of price. All right, so your let's get some input. Your just for some reason I just haven't been able to make the distinction for myself between price that will confirm itself and when it's just going to run and I should have my order in at the line. Matt, if you miss trades because you don't want to just put them in at the line, it's okay. It will cut down some of those times when price just blows through the line. That's why I invented test retest. Okay, so it just means that you're going to have about 25% fewer trades, but that's okay. If you, if you miss getting filled, you get miss getting filled. That's an opportunity loss. It's not a loss. Okay, it'll up your winning percentage. It'll cut the number of trades, but it'll also cut you out of some real stinkers. Okay, all right, so now... We've got this trade planned out, and if we're doing this correctly, we haven't, and we're not filled yet. All right. Let's think about this. If we're just trying to become profitable, or we are just profitable, or we're not consistently profitable. What's our logical profit target? First horizontal area. All right, let me take a look at that. That would be here. Okay, uh, that's actually going to be 3 to 1. We didn't risk 24, we risked 20. That is actually going to be 3 to 1. Okay, you could go in at red, out at red. Sure. Where 3 to 1, okay. I don't want you to think about where 3 to 1 is at. Please don't do that. Scotty says, I believe there would be limit buy orders on the mountain fill low. It's a structure for a long. That was my target. Okay, so Scotty would be out here, right? Three to one, right? Am I correct, Scotty? Okay. Um, I don't want I don't want you to say where's three to one, and then say okay, let me just get out there. Instead, doubling the range using the last low. If you believe this is a sell-off, this shot. Okay, so you need some logic. And if you're just getting to making money, consistently making money, you need to be looking at what's the probable path of price and taking the 80% probability. Well, if we're using green, if you want to go red to red, that's fine. And you also have prior lows. And this is 3 to 1, so that's fine. If you're going to use the green, then of course, at this point it doesn't make that much difference, but you're going to go for the lower green parable, parallel, right? You can do other things like double this range if you want. But double this range while well, we can do it, is it the most likely? Let's see if I got that right. There. Is that the high, most highly probable? Let's leave that. There's nothing wrong with it. 
it has more risk to it. Okay, is the median line parallel 80% from the entry or just the median line itself? Well, it's okay. So let's talk about that now. So, from this red, when it turns, with 80% probability, it's going to get to the median line. If it breaks the median line with 80% probability, it's going to this red median line, right? Oh, I think you can call this a range at the moment until it gets broken. It's a big one. But when we fail to take out the top, I think you can call it a range. Okay, so 80%, it's going to if it takes out the median line, it's going to get to here. But same thing with the with the green. So let me get rid of where the heck this thing starts there. As we come down following the green median line, if we take out the green median line with 80% probability, it's going to the lower parallel, right? There is no... Okay. I, okay. I, there is There is a... For want of a better word, uh, term, and he deserves this, I'm going to say that there's a gentleman out there called a nitwit that did a PhD and then he did another paper, and it's the second paper that really pisses me off. You can't take multiple probabilities. They're not additive. You can't say, here's the probability from A to B, and here's the probability from B to C, and then make a conclusion of D. You can't. Statistics doesn't work that way, nor does trading. Yet, he strung together a bunch of them on a small data patch and makes all kinds of crazy claims that are just cra basically crazy claims. As much as I like the claims because it says median lines are wonderful, he unfortunately is a demon for anybody using media lines because he's passing out information that's crap. And we don't need to. They're plenty powerful as they are. At the moment, we can only use the red or structure as a beginner, just getting profitable as the green is not tested yet. No. Um, no. Reese, let me just... I'll tell you what I said in 2003 when I wrote Trading with Media Lines, um, which was the second statistical test I did on Andrew's work. The question is, if you pick any set of alternating pivots, what's the probability that price will get to the next most likely line? Forget about it being tested. When I did the first statistical test in the early 80s he is an idiot friend Pete um, when I did tell him that hey Pete write this down ready are you ready write this down the founder and first investor in Commodities Corporation was Dr. Paul Samuelson who was also a Democrat also a Nobel Prize winning economist and he had always taught that trading wouldn't make money because the market was random yet he took his Nobel Prize winnings and founded Commodities Corporation, which became the largest hedge fund in the world, and made hundreds of millions of dollars off of that. Okay? Paul Samuelson, one of the most famous economists ever. Okay? Write it down and tell him. My professor, my mentor, Wil Milton Friedman, did a similar thing. So, anyway, back to this question. Any set of alternating pivots, 
gives us the same probability. If we're heading off of this upper parallel with 80% of probability, we're going to get to this median line. If we break this median line and are heading toward this lower parallel with 80% probability, we're going to make this lower parallel. It doesn't make any difference whether it's been tested. Make sense? Now, Reese, I specifically changed the parameters. One second, Aaron. I specifically changed the parameters the second time I did. And this we're talking about 20 years of data and every commodity I could think of in all kinds of time frames. Okay? I specifically changed the parameters because somebody asked me the question, does it have to be tested? And I said, uh, well, in my original work, that's how I tested it. Because I don't, I, at that time, I didn't know how Andrews did his original work. I now own Andrews' original work from the 1920s. But back then, I, at the first time in 1980 when I did the tests, I didn't know. Now I know. But even so, I went back and redid the work. And I did it without any test. And actually, there's a boring, I don't know how many pages, in the E-mini S&Ps, where I just actually used every alternating pivot back to back to back to back to back. And the statistics show that 87% of the time price gets to the next most likely line. So it doesn't have to be retested. It doesn't have to be tested, so to speak. Is the retest mainly to see if you pick C correctly? Um, no, the retest, Aaron, is something that I put together because when these lines get taken out to the upside when they get zoomed, it's often a violent move, right? I hate that. I really, I, I really hate that. And so I had a buddy, Gary Fritz is his name. He was one of the inventors of um, Unix, the computer language. I had him write a database to test it. Nicholas says, I hate that as well. Okay, so if you wait for the test and then sell the retest instead, 80% of the time, you'll have cut out that wide range move to the upside if you're selling. But you'll get 25% fewer trades. If you're willing to accept fewer trades, you've pretty much cut out that zoom and run to the upside. Okay? That's your choice. Which you want, which path you want to follow? For the first 25 years of trading, I just went with it. I just sold them. Oh yeah, sure. We can talk about that in September. Absolutely. Sure. You know, in hopefully live, we'll get many more of these types of back and forth discussions you, we get some we're getting some nice ones today but we don't always get them okay so you get your choice we can play for red we can play for prior lows that's three to one you can play for green once we break the green median line because we're not going to get we can't get to prior lows or the lower red parallel without breaking the green median line correct not physically possible. Now, maybe Scotty didn't put in the secondary median line, or maybe you didn't wouldn't have put in the secondary median line, so you were simply looking at the red and prior lows because it was a high probability target. Make sense? In that case, this is a fine play anywhere in here is a great place to take your money three to one walk away clean nobody gets hurt make sense if you had the logic that I had put in the green median line and said hey if price breaks the red median line and heads toward the red lower parallel it's also going to break the green median line meaning with 80% probability it should get to this lower parallel then 
this is the other probable take your money anywhere on the green lower parallel. That's a high probability. Okay, Kai, take care. I'll see you later in the week. So let's see how this plays out. Speed up a little bit here now. So I can make, I'm going to make some other. So now we're testing the median line, the red median line. Now we've zoomed it. Now we're testing the green median line. We're back above the red. All boxed in. Finally back through the red. Look how fast the green is moving away from us. Can you see it? See the difference in the probable path of prices here? That's why I'm working both. Now we're retesting the green upper parallel and it turns it like a charm. Now how about this? In one bar. Retest the upper parallel. Run it all the way to the green lower parallel. As it hits the red lower parallel and stops, would you still expect an 80% continuation of the green? Yes. Okay, so does this happen often where green and red median lines are close? Um, I don't know practice, Gina. Is that an energy point? Is what an energy point? If they're both downsloping, the answer is no. Nikolai says, I get giddy every time I see them work that precisely, even though I've seen that sometimes. That actually is the danger of median lines, is that sometimes they work so pretty like this that you get you rely on them too much with that, and you get a little sloppy in your money management. So, yeah, I, I agree, Nikolai. But, boy, when they work, it serves pretty. Yes, no happy dance. Okay, oh, oh, it's going a lot lower now, says Timmy. That big bar was merely the trip wire at the balance point. So come back to balance and still head lower. Euclid box time. Okay, so so, so are you going to take your 5 to 1? You could have taken your 3 to 1. You could take your 5 to 1. Okay. Okay, so... How many people, and by the way, 5 to 1 is 1000 bucks. So if you're trading a $10,000 account, pretty nice change, right? For a lot of you, and again, I see a lot of you, a lot of your monthly results, trade by trade, for a lot of you, that $1,000 is all you would have made in a month anyway. We talked about this on Friday, right? Nikolai says, I got to say, I'd take that off. Okay. Anybody want to leave a trailing stop and, and let this thing run? It's gone red to red and green to green. No takers. All right. So I got 100%. Some Jorge says, no, I'm not a pig. Okay. Amanda says, if I'm consistently profitable, I'll do it. Is there a two to one? That's a good question. All right, so, ready? Uh, I think it's that one right there. Yes. So if you put your profit stop here, no, that's one to one. If you're gonna hide right here, that's one to one. So that makes it tough, doesn't it? You're not gonna be able to leave two to one on the table. And we talked about that on Friday. But let me let me say what Reese says. Reese says I agree with Amanda as there is no show of anything any sign of buyers. Basically, I'm going to restate what he says. If I'm consistently profitable, I would try and trail stops. All right. So I understand the quandary that you're not a two to one here, but you're at five to one, so you're definitely at break even. And you can be better than break even. You can be up in here. Okay. 
Is it more risky? Yes. Might you trade this way? Sure. The, I would say 90 to 95% of you should either have your money in the bank here or here, right? Amanda says, my entry was after yours at the green upper parallel was what I could afford. Price just fell short of the entry at 77.9. Oh, okay. So she couldn't get in here, so she missed her entry. Just missed it. Okay. Would you have gotten out at the lower parallel, Amanda? Or let it run. Oh, she said, I'd definitely take my money there. Okay. Let's say you're going to let it run. A little bit of follow through, but a close on the high. Separation, separation, separation. Yeah, a little rangy. Uh, would I move my stop? Hasn't hasn't formed a high yet. Okay, let's talk about boxing in. Here's a low. We definitely have a low end, right? We're not going to have a high end until we take out a low. So my stop still has to be up here somewhere. You've got to me remember the box theory. Here's the box. We break the box. Here's a new box. We've got to break the box to get a stop up here. You don't have a cursor? You have cursor now? Can you see my red cursor? Okay. So one more time. Here's the current box. We break the low with this bar right here, which allows us to put a stop up here. Now our new box is right here. We can't put a stop below until we break out of this box. Okay. All right. So let's see if that's doable. Test, test, test the bottom and zoom out of the hole with separation. If I get me one of those. Okay. Why rain bar separation? All right. Here we go. Make a new high, close in the lower third turn lower. Now, <clears throat> we went from 70, basically we went 110 pips. Then we rallied 50 pips. So, you'd have to watch basically half your profits walk away. And we don't even know if you're going to be right yet, but this is the first downturn after the pullback. So you're sitting through half the money walking away. If you're going to trade, you guys have seen me trade two swings back. Remember, how many people have you seen me? How many of you have seen me do that? <clears throat> Believe me, sucks to be me many times. Okay? But I'm, cha I'm trading for rate of return, not profits. You guys are trading for profits. Do we understand the difference? You're putting money in the bank and building your account. I'm trying to move an investor's profit from 22% to 25% on a trade. See the difference? And you don't. Okay, well, look at it this way, Pete. I can't lose money on this trade now, right? So no matter what happens, the rate of return is going to go up. But if I can maximize this trade... Yes, dear? You're all good if the doorbell rings? Okay, thank you. Um, so if I maximize this trade, I will also maximize the effect to the rate of return. Does that make sense? I'm not telling you to trade like me. In fact, I'm telling you not to trade like me. I'm telling me, telling you that, phew, I know there's a couple hedge fund guys here, and I know there's one CTA here. 
and I know there's a couple people that have a few million dollars in their account, but even actually those two people, I don't recommend they trade that. Okay, I'll take care. You should be thinking about, you got five to one here. Take the money. And even this is pretty damn good. Three to one. Is part of the reason that getting in and out on that size is a bit laborious and costly? That's why you hang on as long as possible. That's part of it. Weezy is is that it's it's difficult in some markets to find opportunities that work with size. For example, Arbob, New York New York Unleaded. There's, not, there's nothing I can do with hundreds of billions of dollars. If I catch a $30,000 contract move in Arbob, it's going to turn into about a half percent rate or return change because I can't get that many contracts off. I just can't. Right? Now, gold, I can go in the cash market. Currencies, I can go in the cash market. Bonds, even bond futures are big enough that I can actually do most of what I need to do in the bond futures, but I can also always go in the bond cash market. So, yeah, that's part of it. And, yeah, this is a parabolic move, so it's another good reason to take the money and walk, right? But if you want to go ahead and, and it's also, absolutely, it's a forced pivot also. There's a lot to like, there's a lot to like down here about taking your money, isn't there? Well, this was a forced pivot as well. this one was the the one that created our green median line so there's every reason to think about the red or the prior lows but I really like this one as a no-brainer take the money and walk away right if you if you had that logic if you only had the red median line logic then take the money at the lower parallel Yes. I'm sorry if it's not the right spot for this question. What is a first pivot? No, there's never a right or wrong spot, Nikolai. Nikolai, <clears throat> we've got this red median line drawn in. Price comes down 80%. It's going to make it to the, the lower parallel. It makes it to the lower parallel and turns on a dime. That's called a forced turn. We come up here. We get to the red upper parallel. It turns on a dime. That's a forced pivot. Does that make sense? Okay. If I had a prearranged order in a 3 to 1, would you just leave it and take it out because I cannot get 5 to 1 that way? Well, why would you have anything at 3 to 1, Pete? Just because it's 3 to 1? Okay, <clears throat> because I need to be profitable isn't a reason, okay? <clears throat> what I need you to do, what I want you to do, is decide where the most probable, likely target is and put your profit order around there. It can be five pips above it, whatever, okay? But just measuring out three to one is not that good of an idea. I mean, will it help your profitability? Yes, but you don't need to do that. If you go for these probable targets, they get hit about 80% of the time, okay? And you're probably going to leave a half a stop, a stop, a stop and a half on the table when there was no reason to just because you automatically put it three to one. And there's a reason. Okay, but you can just, the mo okay, he says, it's, I usually put in, one cancels the other orders in. Okay, but once you figure out where the profitable, the probable target is, then just change the limit order, Pete. Right? Make sense? Ouija says, is this like the soy meal trade where you asked, why is this low important? I'm going to sound very st stupid when I answer this, Ouija. I don't remember the trade. I'm operating on low brain activity at this point.
but let me let me let me explain it this way and I, and I'm sorry I don't remember that trade but doesn't this look like the probable target for this trade doesn't this look like it's done all it's supposed to do what does kind of mean Pete and you caught the parabolic move right looks like the mirror image at the top okay I like that as well I stop doing that to me Pete you're gonna kill me yes hesitantly what do you what if you disagree tell me well with that blue to blue bar it is tempting to assume that there's more gas in the tank okay so let's assume there's more gas in the tank Nikolai how about that so Nikolai the the discussion is I actually trade somewhat differently than I teach you to trade and I have it's because of all the money I trade okay so I actually put my stops two swings back but there's a cost to that which is I got to sit through my so my father which I got to hold my water through some sometimes through some pretty nasty swings in order to try and catch I mean it looks like there's some serious sellers and I'm and I agree with you Nikolai but I also notice that the volatility is picking back up again and what's that gonna feel like and if I've already grabbed five to one and a, it's a very nice probable place to take the money get in get out take the money if you're not con consistently profitable I'd say take the money personally Weezy says that one that down bar must have woken the gray barts. Well, remember, there's always two of them awake anyway. But yeah, they're probably clanking beers. Nikolai says I definitely would have taken it there. Okay, but you're interested to see if there's more. So let's see if you're going two swings back. Let's see how this works out. So as we talked about, we get down, we retest the bottom retest the bottom now separation I had to sit through 50 pip rally if I'm gonna go two swings back which means half my profits on the board at this point are at risk and I can't move my stop and back up to test it finally we're back through the blue the red median line back to the green median line and the prior lows okay sure and it's approximate or we even better we could do this the way we normally do which is 10 pips So at the moment, when we plunge through this bottom, we can put our stop right here. If you're two swings back, okay? No interest in doing a little Amos technique and hitting it again with some more, says Timmy, or is that isn't the market for it and you're still getting back in the groove. This one seemed real clear when it came back to balance to hit it again. Um, Amos actually would be selling the break here, Timmy. He wouldn't be selling up here. He be pushing it. Well, Aaron, I'd have to be at, at least here, if not here. How's that? I'm going to just leave it there. Then you can be here, etc. Okay. 
So Amos is going to start piling on now, Timmy. It's cleared probable structure. Now it's time to pile on. Me, got no interest in that. Especially, remember, Amos... In fact, Amos never saw intraday charts. Amos passed away before the internet was able to bring live. You could watch the tape, but he was not a, break, a breakout trader. He'd set up his trade, he'd put in his first position, then if it broke through an important area, then he would set up his second position and get to a quarter of his capital. <clears throat> yeah, Timmy, I, and I'm not suggesting that he would enter here, Timmy, uh, in this trade. Again, this is an intraday trade. So us trying to discuss what Amos would do to add doesn't make any sense because it's not something that lends itself. Now when we we're going to go over gold and a couple other trades ad, ad nauseum in September um, where I actually use I don't often use Amos's techniques but where I use Amos's techniques and I'll show you then how I believe Amos would have traded them. I only, unfortunately, I only spent four years with them, but <clears throat> all right. So I sat through a 50 pip rally. Now we finally make a new low. Okay, as close as you could be would be either here, or if you wanted to be, as far as I'm concerned, up close and personal. This is as close as your stop could be. Once it breaks through. Everybody follow me? Which was the trade you had the little oops on in which you had more than you thought? Oh, that wasn't gold. I knew to the penny when I was in gold. Must have been soybeans. Oh, natural gas, Ouija says. Okay. Ouija remembers better than me. Okay, so this is as close as you could be. You sat through a 50 pip rally. Now we're making new lows. You can breathe again, right? Back to the green lower parallel. Huh. That's interesting. Generally, unless I could do something like double the range, if I'm going to let it run, I'm just going to box and box and box until I see something that the logic will turn on in your head and you say, okay. I see now, just as you see for the entry, I hunt until the entry starts to make logical sense. Same thing with the exit, right? Wait for the logic to make itself known. Does that make sense? Okay. So we'll go down to the lower parallel. Looks like we're going to run. Would the logic here be the lower parallel? Um, is Amanda, what's your logic? I don't, I don't know that it's going to stop here. There's nothing wrong with, again, taking your money right here, is there? Right? It's following this green meeting line. You could certainly take your money here, and it looks wonderful. But to hold through all that for a fraction more, says Reese, why cash in now? So, 5, well, 77, 10, 
yeah, it's 50 more pips. So, one to one, right? David says the spiral is starting to look bigger and bigger. So like Reese, he's saying maybe there's more to catch here, right? But let's think about the logic of what you just said. And again, I'm not telling you to trade the way I trade or trade the I'm suggesting you might consider trading the clean way because here's the problem with a spiral that's bigger. Can anybody tell me what the problem is when a spiral gets bigger and bigger? The pullback is bigger as well. Yeah. There's two sides to a sword. Very good. So you have to be able to swallow both sides, right? It works in your favor on the profit side as long as you don't get stopped out above. But look at it. Remember, I'm not going to lose money on this trade now. And the spiral eventually will break apart. You are right, Gino. All right, so we come down to this lower parallel. Amanda says, why not cash the money? Nothing wrong with that, Amanda. Amanda says, I don't care. I'm taking my money. Nothing wrong with that, okay? Okay, kind of rangy now. As price restores its energy. But it's working its way higher. Now we're outside the green median line. If that worries you, of course, you can have in your trading plan, you know, three three closes above and you'd be out. But then again, if you were staying with it, then you would be out there. But whatever your rule is. I think the fragile mentality would be difficult to stay confident with violent swings. I saw on the floor only the best could stay with those. Well, Pete, that's right. You have to be, we've talked about this. And Nikolai, you'll see this quote all, over and over and over, one of the dead Greek quotes. You have to be smooth and rounded, okay? You have to know what you're about. And in this case, if you don't know what you're about, at this point, your collar's starting to get a little tight, right, Reese? Sliding parallel, uh, no point. I'm just going to box in. You can change your underwear if you need to. It. Did you lose your lunch? I'm going to... I wouldn't when I trade, but just for purposes. Just so you know where we are. We've got our low here, and we're looking for a high, right? Good thing we're two stop swings behind with the stop. Yeah, if you can trade that way, you're still in good shape, right? And it, But this seems like the world just ended, doesn't it? And the net bar happens. But we don't trade to the left, Pete. Right? Yeah, this is a 100 pip bar. This was a 65 pip rally before we got the new lows. But because of that, we can now go here. Right? Definitely a wash and rinse and... Ran all the stops there were. Primetime New York. Yeah, beautiful, huh? Now, if you're running your stops back a swing or two, and you're willing to leave some money on the table and let it swing, when price gets down here, you can still be short. But those are lots of ifs, isn't it? Aren't they? New lows. 
new lows, new lows. Look where we are again. Amanda, do you want to take your money again? Amanda says, third time's lucky. Amanda says, give me the money again, please. Not making 3D lows. That is true. And Nickel, I don't know if you know what that means, but if we use the median line, this frequency, as our reference point instead of horizontal, we're not making new lows at at best, and not really, we're making double bottoms. You turn your head to the right. So let's see what we get out of this. Right back up. Amanda, you're looking like a genius, huh? It is Friday. It is primetime New York. Probably the vast majority of traders here really need to understand the concept of dynamic, dynamic risk reward as opposed to trading like you are in a contest to achieve highest rate of return among the universe of hedge fund managers. That's absolutely true. That's why I'm going to tell you, I'll show you the whole trade possibility, but I'll tell you where you should be out. I see it. I've, we filled the valley from where we started to follow the market after the very first coil. Okay, so let's see. Let's see where this ends up uh, for the weekend. So that's it for the week. And then this is liveish. There's liveish right there, okay? So this was the low, the third time down to the lower pair. I've got to mark this three. It's four drives lower, but it's the third time we touched the lower parallel, okay? Let's get, go back and get some perspective here. You should be out right here. And I have no problem with you getting out here at the red lower parallel, which is 3 to 1. But you definitely should be out right here. This is a no-brainer. Sorry, right here. Here's, my, here's the two areas that I would suggest, I got that wrong. It's the two areas that I suggest. Right here, which is three to one, and prior lows and the lower, red lower parallel, and or, oh, one more time. So, right, anywhere in here, Those are the two places that I, well, I'll answer your re-entry question in a second. This is the, these are the two places that I suggest you get out. Anybody disagree with me? Now, re-entering, there is a problem with re-entering. Let's say you want to re-enter here. Whoa, what's your stop? Unless you're comfortable with that being your swing high, there's no stop. So, and let's say you wanted to re-enter. I don't know why you'd want to re-enter here, but... Again, no, did. Again, what's your stop? No stop. So once you're out, that's one of the other reasons why, as a hedge fund manager, you want to try and soak up every pip because re-entries sometimes don't show up. As I said, when we go over the gold trade in... We're going to put a microscope on it, and you'll see entry after entry after, I don't know, there's maybe 13 or 14 entries in that thing. Then everything gets taken out. Then there's a re-entry, but it's very rare. 
Given the lack of 3D lows, would your stop now be above the last red dotted line? Uh, I don't know where you're, where are you at, Reese? Are you at the right side here? I handle re-entry as though it was a whole new trade with proper, yes, Paul, you should handle re-entry as though it was a new trade, proper stops, risk reward, exactly right. It, every trade has to stand on its own. When I, there are very few times that I add, but in the gold, for example, I added a number of times, and every single add had to stand on its own, okay? The risk reward, the stop, everything, the whole shot, okay? So a re-entry, I don't actually, I rarely add on unless I'm forced to for a portfolio reason. Always make them two bars from the end. Oh, two bars from the end. It breaks structure rules, but would the lack of 3D lows change your opinion on the stop selection? Once we take out this low, remember, okay, one second. Remember, the more money we get in this, the more aggressive we're going to be with our stop selection, correct? So we've got so we got so many runs down and so much money in this thing and the swings the spiral is getting larger I'm going to be right above this wide range bar and my thought about this trade was we keep hitting this damn lower parallel and stopping and it's Friday I'll draw a new one. That's what I thought. I wish I just put the order in here, Amanda. Instead, we left the double tops. I put noise above the noise above it. I just said, you know what, if it cracks this guy's, go to the market. So this bump was probably me. I didn't, you know what, Amanda, it's my first week back. I didn't want to hold over the weekend. What do you mean, ouch? It's okay. Peter, what do you mean, ouch? Look. Again. I risked $200. And I made eighteen hundred dollars. Could I have made an extra thirty pips? Yeah, sure. It's okay. It's a nice stretch, but I wasn't a pig. I don't actually think I'm on top of my game. I had a really great the trade on Friday that I showed was magnificent, but I kind of fell into that one. This one, nice, logical. I suggest you consider either taking your money right here at the red and prior lows or at the green right here and being happy with the $1,000. Instead of taking in the assets and living through this. Right? Even if you chose to sit through any of these, you would have made money by moving your stops, right? I like the easy peasy scenario for now. Time may change that. Hey, if you, uh, Pete, I call it making donuts. If you can make donuts time after time after time. The money, when you look at your port, if you're a consistently profitable trader, I'm going to just keep saying this over and over to you guys. You know you're becoming a good professional trader when the majority of your winning trades look the same. Not 10 pips, 15 pips, 10 pips, 30 pips, 
and then 150 pips, and, but there's only one like that, okay? The home run isn't what makes your month. It's those three to ones, four to ones, four and a half to ones. That's what's going to make your month, period. Everybody like would love to hit a 20 to one, trust me. But I've told you guys before, if I look at my year and take out all the home runs, it's the three to ones, four to ones, five to ones that make the year, even for me. Not the up and down emotion, super consistent confidence builder done. Yep, you got it, Timmy. So even for me, if you take out those home runs, it's those day-to-day -day consistent profitable trades that make the year. It sucks when you think you're there and while you slip out another friggin' banana peel. Yeah, but Peter, I haven't seen that many of your trades, but you've talked about a couple of them, and here's the key. You always only risk the same amount. So let me say what I said to you on Friday, and I want everybody to listen to this again. And if you haven't gone to the free section and downloaded the spreadsheets that you fill out about your average loss, biggest loss, how many losing trades are you willing to take in a row, how much are you willing to risk per trade, go get those and fill those out. Your largest loser needs to be within 10% of your average loss. Period. Then, you, could you get like three losers in a row? Sure. But remember, if you had one winning trade where you made three to one, you've paid for three losing trades in a row, right? Pete, if you'd caught this one to here, which is five to one, you could have five losers in a row. Take care, Reeser. You could have five losers in a row and pay for it and not even feel the heat, right? That's how we get to the point. I talked about it on Friday. On Friday, I put away 10 to 1 on that trade, okay? When you're at 10, 11, 12 to 1, even if it's the first week of the month, you're not going to have a losing month. Not as long as you practice 3 to 1 or better. You're not. Once you get up at 10-ish, you're going to have a winning month. So practice putting away stops stop thinking about money and think about stops or units it's when you start to think about cash you start feeling that pressure to pay the rent or whatever or I haven't had I haven't made X amount and stop instead start thinking okay I just made three stops great oh I lost one okay now I did did you say your largest loser has to be within 10% of your average losing trade I did say that Robbie If it's bigger than 10% of your average losing trade, you better have a very good... Robbie, you and I have been over on, have, have been over that in mentoring. Your largest loser needs to be within 10% of your average losing trade. Otherwise, you better come with a story about that broker really screwed me or there was news or whatever. I'm still trying to sort out the software errors. I had a bad one on the Canada. Then you should be sim trading, Pete. Sim trade for a little more, okay? Get out of the cash. Stop losing cash in your market. Sim trade until you do have the software down, until you understand all the glitches between you and the software, okay? Do not put, it's, it's too hard to find trading capital. If you're not all good with the platform you're trading on and the platform you're charting on, then sim trade while you sort it out. Okay? Follow me? There's nothing wrong with sim trading. Don't be in a hurry to put your money on the line. Put your money on the line when it's time to put your money on the line. Okay? All right. We Did we learn anything today? In my opinion, best exit right there.
Have a great Monday. I'll see you later in the week. And let me know if the video sucks. And uh, if it does, I'll fix it, okay? All right. Take care, everybody.